and this is not a presentation tonight to vote on tonight. This is a presentation to introduce a concept to you. We're going to kind of gauge your response tonight. And, if, and if, the, if your response is very favorable, then we will activate our CAT team, which is a construction advisory team. We will activate them and then get serious about doing something here. And then at some point in the future, we will bring before you the vote on the building. So this is the first step in getting to that, in, the, in that process. So I wanted you to understand where we are. This is not a done deal. This is not a done deal. Now someone else I want to introduce you tonight, Randy Laycock. Randy with Lubbock National Bank. Uh, Bacon Heights has had a 47 year relationship. I think it started out South Lubbock National Bank and then became Lubbock National Bank. When we got ready to build the commons, I put out an RFP request for proposals to about six different banks. And Lubbock National came in and said, we're not losing your business. And they brought us a, a very, very favorable, very favorable uh, loan package. And Randy's here tonight to look at what's going on. Would love to be able to continue working with Lubbock National Bank at about a 0.1% interest rate. <laughs> <laughs> Over 30 years, yeah. Okay. So enough of my Tom Fuller and song and dance. Craig Robertson, lead architect of the award-winning Commons Come and make the presentation tonight. Thank you. I hope this is this on. Everybody hear me all right? One, uh, you know, it says that uh, iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen another. So I've been called a yuppie tonight, and I had my ears made fun of because he couldn't mold this around my ear. So I just want you to know that when you start getting sharpened, uh, it hurts a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. It's a pleasure to be back here. This is a uh, church we're very proud to have a relationship with. We're very proud of our project out there. And it wasn't just a, a one-person show. It was a team of some amazing, amazing designers. Uh, and all of us just had, uh, if you talk to any architect that has a good project, they always say the reason why we had a good project is we had a fantastic client, uh, a client that's willing to push the boundaries, a client that's willing to listen and entertain ideas. And uh, it was just a, a pleasure to work through that project. So we were excited uh, to get to be able to come back on board with you guys and work on this. Uh, so tonight, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you where we're at with an existing building. Uh, I also want to show you uh, the concept that we've got. Uh, so we're going to look at the building a little bit in massing model. This is called a massing model, if I can actually get it to roll around. So this is your church, and I'm going to try to make sure that everybody's on the same page with me and that we're understanding what's going on. So we're going to talk about how we're going to add on to this project, and then I'm going to go in and look at each one of the little floor plans and kind of talk about what's going into each one of the floors. After that, uh, we'll field some questions or whatever you want to do, Jason. And then we've also got these floor plans on these boards, and we'll welcome you afterwards if you want to come up and look at them a lot more closely, uh, to come up here and actually see what's going on. Because I know up on the screen and hearing it for the first time is going to be a lot of information taken in. So we want to make sure that we're communicating as, good, as well as we can to you. Uh, does that sound all right to y'all? Yeah? Good? How are you doing, right? Good. Uh, well, here we are. This is a, just a site plan of your existing church facility. Uh, this is what we had modeled before. Did we, have a, did we have a site? We did do a site plan, didn't we, Aaron? But we had, the, we had the image of it, didn't we? Let me pull up one other thing real quick. Maybe. Well, where did I put it at, Aaron? There it is. Yeah, this would be good. So this, uh, this is your existing site. Uh, one of the things that we're talking about doing is as we come in over here, and we'll, we'll look at this a little bit more in detail, as we come over here and start looking at adding on to this project, uh, some of the things we're going to start doing is we've got this really great front door out here, which is what we want to create as a church. You, as a first-time visitor to a church, you have about seven minutes before a person makes up their mind if they're coming back. That's seven minutes, a very short window. From the time they cross your property line until they come into your building, you've got seven minutes to make an impression. 
And there's a lot of things that go on with that. Can I find a front door, which I think we've created? Uh, am I welcomed? Am I greeted? That has nothing to do with the architecture. That has everything to do with you guys. Uh, when I get into the facility, can I find my way around? Or is it a maze? Uh, because I'm already a first-time guest. I'm already apprehensive. I don't want to look like a first-time guest when I come in here. So that's what we did a lot with this commons, is we want people to be able to come in here and clearly see where everything's at. So we color-coded the preschool. We put letters up here where the youth's over here, preschool's over here. It's a clear shot down the, the hallway to the children's area. Uh, but some of the things we want to do is we want to keep re-emphasizing this front door. So some of the things we're talking about doing is uh, taking some of these uh, handicapped parking spots and let's move them over here closer to these front doors. Uh, and you're going to see why here in just a second. So we're talking about taking some of those spots, uh, putting them closer to that front door, uh, both of these main entryways over here. Uh, and let's go in and look at the model a little bit. So here's your existing facility right now. So here's the front door, here's the canopy, here's the administrative wing, here's your, uh, your sunken courtyard over here. Is everybody following so far what we're doing? So this is uh, one of the things we're talking about doing is coming in here and adding on. And we started talking about as we add on to this project, this canopy out here starts to get in the way a little bit. So one of the things we're talking about doing is removing that piece. And that's going to allow for us to come in here with a whole new massing uh, to put over the entire project. So this is what we're talking about right now. And again, this is conceptual, so this doesn't mean that we're going to pull the trigger on it and get it done. Okay? Uh, but we want to walk you through what each one of these floors looks like a little bit. Uh, so here's what we're trying to do is we're trying to, we're trying to be uh, utility with our space. We're not trying to make a grand uh, common space. We're not trying to make a grand front door. We've already created those things. What we're trying to do is give classroom space. Uh, but we also want to be sensitive to your existing architecture. So some of the things we're wanting to do is come in here with your exist the, the brick that we've put over here, start bringing in some of these same materials, the stucco, start creating some of these same materials. Uh, and so we do want to create a nice building over here uh, next to the Fellowship uh, Life Center, or Family Life Center. We also want to create a little bit of a front door. So this is a little bit hard to understand what's all going on the inside, isn't it? Looking at this just right now. So let's, let's jump in here and look at a few things. And we'll come back to this here in just a minute. So let me pull this up. So here's your existing first floor plan. And I know floor plans are a little bit uh, challenging to read. So right now, here's that front door. Here's the administrative suite, Jason's office. There's the stairs that goes down to the children's area. Can you all see my pointer up here? All right. And the sunken courtyard. So what we're talking about doing on the first floor, and I'll flip back and forth here in just a second. We're going to do several things. Let me walk you through all this stuff. So here's that, to give you a reference, here's the elevator. Here's where that sunken courtyard used to be. So here's what we're planning on doing is coming in here and adding on. We're going to infill that courtyard, and I'll show you the basement floor plan in just a second. We're going to infill that courtyard down below, and that's going to allow us to <coughs> kick this first floor out a lot more. So what this is going to allow us to do is expand the administrative offices. I think right now y'all are still, y'all got most of your people in your suite, but you still got one or two uh, that are out. So this is going to help bring everybody together into one secure location. Okay. Okay. We got some people, yeah, that's right. We've got some people that are in very, very small offices. And so this is really going to allow for some, some larger office space. So this is going to allow us to create two good size offices, uh, which will allow room for uh, desk and workspace, but also allow for conference tables, so you can do some counseling in those spaces if we need to. Uh, we're also looking to create a conference room. Uh, it's about a 600 square foot conference room. And one of the key terms we're, we're using with churches is we want to be good stewards with the finances that we have, and we want to be good stewards with the spaces that we have. We're no longer trying to design spaces that are used for one or two hours a week. We want to design spaces that are used continually throughout the week. So when you see this conference room, this isn't just going to be locked into a conference room that's used once a month. We're really seeing this as a multifunctional space. We're seeing this as a, a classroom, a meeting room, a space for women Bible studies, for men's Bible studies, and for a conference room, uh, a space for counseling, a space for a lot of things. We want to utilize this space. We're seeing this in the business workplace. We're seeing this in hospitals. 
We're seeing this in schools, that these conference rooms are becoming some very, very critical spaces. So a good-sized conference room that's really going to double as a, a lot of different things. Uh, next to that, and again, we're still over that sunken courtyard. Uh, we're looking to add two more classrooms. So one's about 645 square feet. To give you an idea, that's probably about 30 people that we can fit into this room. Uh, you could put a little bit more in there if you wanted to do more of the lecture-style seating, uh, but you could put 30 people in there comfortably in a Sunday school type of setting. Uh, 400, so uh, rule of thumb is for adults uh, is 20 square foot per person, so when you look at these numbers, that will give you an idea. If you're at 400 square feet on this classroom, you can put about 20 people comfortably in here. So just between these two, we're looking at you know, about 50 people that we can house just on this first floor. And we like this idea because it's on the first floor. You're not having to go up an elevator. You're not having to go up uh, or down uh, to get to this space. So we've got two good-sized classrooms plus a good-sized conference room that can double as a lot of different things. Um, also grabbing a little bit of storage, um, and we're having to do some things from a, a life safety standpoint with the stairs. Whenever you start doing multi-stories, you've got to enclose your staircase uh, so that uh, what we're trying to do is prevent smoke and fire from transversing between all the different floors. So these staircases will actually be enclosed. So we won't be able to do a whole lot of glass on them at all, uh, but we're doing that from a life safety standpoint. One of the things we're also going to do is upgrade this restroom. Y'all can say amen. amen. Baptist churches say amen. That's all right. Yep. Um, actually, you know, I was pretty impressed. I, I came in here tonight. I didn't really know that I was in a Baptist church because the front row actually filled up first. So I don't know if that was <laughs> if that was because you're nearsighted like I am or uh, what that was. So we're going to bring this up into an ADA uh, restroom. So this will be handicap accessible. Uh, also, some of the things we're going to do is increase the size of your current kitchen. Uh, amen. Oh, that got a round of applause. So applause is better than amen. Okay. I didn't see that in the Bible. I'll have to look for that. Raising up the hands there. That's good. So I lift it up like that. So what I think right now we've got about 320 square feet in your existing uh, kitchen. So, you, well, this is hard to, to gauge. We get about 300, you got about 320 square feet in your existing kitchen, so we're actually going to jump up quite a bit. Uh, you're going to get about 600, we're going to get it up to about 615 square feet. So what this do, does is it allows for a lot of different things. This still allows for us to have a nice long counter uh, in here where y'all can do coffee service. It's going to allow for two really good-sized islands out here with storage underneath them. Uh, we have not worked through all the details. Again, this is very conceptual, so we're just trying to give you the idea of what we're talking about to give a sense of space. Uh, it's got room in here for two, uh, for a, a two-door refrigerator and a two-door freezer and a large ice maker, uh, and still a lot of your cooking uh, pieces that you have now for a six-burner uh, stove, a convection oven, a griddle, uh, and then a three-compartment wash sink and a lot of ample room. You're looking at four feet uh, around this island, so a lot of room to maneuver around, so a lot bigger, uh, a lot more usable than what you have. That does take up a little bit of this uh, classroom out here, and it also takes up that storage in the back. Uh, but we think this, this will be a lot more functional. So this is your first floor. Let me jump up to your uh, basement and second floors to give you a sense of those. Uh, let's start down here in the basement, and then we'll go up to the second floor. So your basement, there's not a whole lot we're changing. We're really just infilling uh, your existing courtyard, and again, conceptual design. So what we talked about right now is you've got about 1,300, a little bit more than that, closer to 1,900, I think, with storage and everything else. We're basically talking about just splitting that courtyard in half and creating two large multi-purpose rooms, uh, whether those are kids' classrooms or... Uh, their meeting rooms or their playroom, uh, that's completely up to you guys as to how you use them. So right now it's uh, two classrooms or two multifunctional rooms. Uh, one's about 800 square feet, one's about 680, almost 700 square feet. So we're getting two really good size uh, spaces down there, which we think will help uh, with the children's area. That can be, uh, you know, a nice indoor play area. We can do something in there. But again, the idea of being good stewards with our space and make, making multifunctional rooms. Uh, and then just creating some storage along with those. Uh, one of the things we're doing 
since we're adding on a second story as we will have to retrofit the current uh, elevator since it only serves two floors. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump up here to the third floor. So, or the third floor, the second floor. We're adding a third story on, Jim, just to... <laughs> might, might as well, right? Uh, we're at, this is actually going to allow us to get about 11,000 additional square feet up here on the second story by taking this out over the uh, courtyard. So to give you a reference of where we're at, here's that stairwell here that goes down to the children's area, and here's your elevator. So we're able to grab, uh, we had nine in there at one time. We only have eight now, don't we, Aaron? That's right. So we're able to grab about eight more classrooms up here. And each one of these classrooms is about 700, uh, roughly 700 square feet. So each one of these classrooms is somewhere between 40 and 60 seats per classroom. Uh, so you can do the math, because I'm not going to be able to do that in my head as I stand up here. Uh, and some of these are some pretty, good, pretty generous. These are 900 square foot classrooms down here, so you can fit about 70 to 80 people in each one of these classrooms. So we've got about eight classrooms in here. We're trying to create a good circulation core, so it's not just a corridor, but we've got a loop around here that really makes for good circulation through here, uh, a space for coffee service, so adults aren't having to go downstairs to grab coffee, but we've got coffee up there at the top level. Uh, and then some storage uh, space up here as well, as well as ADA uh, accessible restrooms up on the second story as well. There was no clapping or amens on classroom space. <laughs> kitchens, kitchens and restrooms are priorities for this church. I see that. I see. That's right. That's right. Everybody's got to have their priorities, right? So you can see, let's jump back to this model here a little bit. So you can see this second story actually juts out pretty far uh, over that first story. We're trying to grab as much square footage as we can without encroaching upon this parking lot. Um, so we've, this actually does a lot of different things. This helps us to create kind of the sun shelf. You can see some of the shadows. So we're not allowing so much of that harsh stunt sunlight to come into those classrooms. So we've got a little bit of a sun shelf or a sh um, a shadow line that we can create on this. Uh, and again, we're trying to be as economical as possible on this and get as much square footage as we can. That is a super quick, quick snapshot. Um, is there anything else you want me to go over, Jason, or open it up for thoughts, comments? OK. Y'all got any questions or comments at this point? Yes, ma'am. When churches want to expand like this to bring in new members, what about parking? Because um, that's going to be a, a you know, big concern, I'm sure, especially for the elderly with handicap parking, but then parking for everyone else as well. Do you want to field that one, Jim, or would you like? Okay. Right now we have a, a lease agreement with a double nickel. So the, the south parking lot right here is ours, but we have a lease agreement where we can park on the double nickels parking spot as well. So I think we're okay on parking. But one of the benefits that we have over the last few years is we've been able to buy houses. We own the house right here, which we call Annex 3. We own the house right next to us here. We call that Annex 1. We've got the, we own the house right next here. That's Annex 2. Ms. Patterson is still living in it. Uh, when she no longer needs it, then we'll, we'll occupy it, but we own it. We've got the mission house next to it. But we've got the house on both ends of the block. So at some point, if we need additional parking, we've got space to tear down houses and add parking. But in the short term, we have got the double nickel parking place that we can use on Sunday mornings. And, and Craig, let me just build a little bit on what you said. When, yep. when you look at things, some of the things that Craig didn't go into detail on, because we can get lost in the weeds really, really fast. But the reason some of the rooms are the size that they are and the shape that they are comes down with building code on in ingress mm -hmm. and egress, that you have to have a certain number of entrances to come in. I don't know if you noticed it or not, but the stairwell down on the other end is actually turned. And the reason that that's taking place is because the new building codes, I'm going to brag on him, they went down to the city and looked at the codes, and there has been a new set of codes that's come down, not from the city of Lubbock. <laughs> <laughs> a new set of codes that have come down nationally that now require, when you have a, a staircase that goes more than two floors, goes three, it has to be totally enclosed, it has to be fire rated, and there has to be a landing on it. 
that now the one right here the first one we can move it over about four feet and we're okay and that changed the, some of the configuration that's why we got some strange spaces in there for additional storage which is a good thing in the church but we always want to have classroom but storage is great but on the other end we can't go south four feet because then we're going to have to dig in and take down our our retention wall and do excavating and that drives the cost up significantly so the way to accommodate that we had to turn the stairwell so so bear in mind the reason that some of these classes are the shape they are because of codes. I will also tell you this, it's been a challenge because if you would get up on the roof and look to see where some of the support columns are, there's no logical order to where the columns are placed. And so they've had to work around some of those columns. I will also tell you on the, on the second floor especially, Craig has been very diligent to provide corridors that if God continues to bless our church and we need some additional building in the future, long after I'm gone, but in the future if we need to add another building, we can on the north next to our building and we've already got it in, in mind where we can punch through and make the corridors to, to pair up. So there is some really, really long range planning put into place on this and I've been talking more than you probably want to hear, but you need to understand codes require some of the things that, that are in this building. Good questions, really good question. Hang on, hang on. Is the flat roof a feasible thing on the new building? Uh, on top of the, the new story that we're talking about, any uh, anytime we show you a flat roof, we cannot, uh, we don't actually do a truly flat roof anymore on anything. Everything has got to have a positive slope from a code standpoint and from a product warranty standpoint. So what we typically do, this, this is a, what we call a TPO roof. It's a, some long scientific name that I won't be able to pronounce well, but basically it's a rubber membrane roof, but you can do a quarter and 12 slope. So it's a very sh uh, shallow slope, but it's, we've actually used it on part of your roof that we redid over here. And it's a fantastic product that lasts about 20, 25 years, uh, the warranty does. Uh, so we will still have a positive slope and we're looking at taking it out to the north, I believe, aren't we, Aaron, and draining it out that way or we really haven't looked at that much into detail on that. So we will not have a truly flat roof, but it will be, it'll have a gentle slope to it. And part of it too, you can't put a full gable roof on that because we have to put some of the mechanical units up there as well. Mm -hmm. I think that comes into play also, placement of heating and air conditioning, yeah. Oh no, it's Karen. <laughs> How much of the preschool area are we going to lose for, I guess it must be make, uh, enlarging the kitchen? Is that where it's coming from? Yes, ma'am. Is it ma preschool? Uh, we're not losing a lot. Let me Okay. Let me go through here and get, uh, so we're, yeah, we're basically where this door is right here. Uh, we're basically coming in and capturing this space right here. Oh, that's it. So okay. we're not really, we're losing three feet times uh, whatever that is, 20. So maybe, uh, yeah, maybe 60, 60 square feet, 70 square feet. Uh, are we creating a need for a second elevator down where the other set of stairs are? That's a good question to actually entertain. Uh, by code, we don't have to have a second one, but just because it's not required by code doesn't mean that we shouldn't. I think that's a, a good thing to entertain. I think that's a good thing for us to discuss. Uh, we haven't actually talked about that. Um, I think that's something that uh, uh, Jim and Jason and the committee at this point, or if we get to move forward, that would be something we would want to discuss. What's the cost of, a, of an elevator roughly, Craig? Uh, well, we, we allocated about $100,000 to put to, to retrofit this one. That's being very conservative right now. We're guessing it's going to be about sixty dollars to $70,000. They're, they're doing elevators where they're actually doing the piston inside the shaft now and not having to actually excavate or drill down. Uh, so there's probably ways that we could come in there and do a, a shaftless or a, that's not called shaftless, what's it called? Uh, we'll say shaftless, you know, you don't know the difference, do you? <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> we'll call it a shaftless elevator, how about that? Considering it. Mm -hmm. 
Let me give you a definition of his term conservative, okay? When I talk about conservative, I'm trying to come down with the lowest number possible, okay? When he talks about conservative, he's trying to come up with the highest number possible so that worst case scenario, safest. Worst case scenario, this is what it would cost. Uh, that's, that's his definition of conservative. Correct. Yeah, so yeah. make and sure you all understand that. I'm not trying to put more money into your project at all. That's not what I'm trying to do, but we're trying to cover our bases. And when we're dealing with conceptual design, that means we have not gone through and looked at everything with a fine tooth comb yet. So we don't know what we're gonna deal with. And anytime you get into a renovation project, you're going to uncover things. We uncovered a lot of scary things actually in this project we did, so. Yes. Population growth, how long in the future is this gonna hold us? That's another good question. Y'all y'all went through and said that y'all needed nine classrooms. Was that going through and looking at growth, Jim? Part of what we're looking at is recognizing that Dana has maxed out downstairs in the children's building. You saw that we had a large group of children up here. She needs additional space. There's no other space downstairs for her because they're all occupied by adult classes. So part of what we're looking at doing is creating classrooms on the second floor for adults so that we can expand the children's and that's not a part of this, not a part of this building project. We've got to get everything else working first. But eventually then we will use this, the basement will become a children's ministry area. John, under the plan that we have now, we've got, we've got classes in Annex 1, classes in Annex 3, classes in Annex 7, and we've got class in our Morgan Portable Building out back. When this is completed, we will have everybody under one roof at one time with, I think, one or two classrooms to spare. As we fill that up, then we start overflowing again into the annexes until we fill those up and then have to come back. But we need to grow to a point where we can pay for it before we expand. Do you have level three in the book there somewhere? You was going to show it to us a while ago. No, I misspoke. I don't have a level <laughs> okay. three. <laughs> no, what, what we've talked about is when we started looking at this is we don't want to paint ourselves into a corner. And so we wanted to make sure we were like, okay, if after we get this built, are we going to be painted into a corner? Um, and so we really wanted to make sure uh, that we thought that through. And so we've talked about actually coming out here to the north on this side of the building. Uh, in the future, if we need to, we've got room out there to actually grow this, and we can come in here and knock some corridors uh, to actually make some connections. Uh, and what size this is going to be out here is that's undetermined. But I think we've still got some room on the site. We're starting to starting to hem ourselves in a little bit tighter, but we still got a little bit more room to play. And Alice just reminded me the rooms that we were building upstairs are much much bigger than the classrooms we have in the annexes. We've got people meeting in bedrooms and living rooms in the annexes. So that is allowing for, for some growth to take place, John. And then we don't have anybody in the Family Life Center with this plan. And again, then as we grow and fill it up, then we can start using the FLC again, use the annexes again. So this is a mid midterm, but we've got to fill it up. So there'll be a lot of space for growth. Good question. Anybody else got any more questions? One back in the back first. Uh, the question. If we're taking away the courtyard downstairs, is that going to cause a problem having children at a certain age level in the basement? Uh, the way the code is, it's usually if you're doing a daycare setting, you don't want them on the basement or second floor. Right now, y'all aren't doing a full three-day-a-week oh, no. uh, daycare. So it's by code, we, it, we're fine. Uh, we're just we're limiting if you guys want to do a three day a week uh, PDO or daycare system in here. Dave's just sad he's going to lose his paint room out in the courtyard. That's the. <laughs> <laughs> you got a question down here. He can have the portable. Yeah. I was just curious how long the projected building would be and where everybody goes while the building is in process. Uh, that's a good, the way the whoever had built y'all's original building back in 1980. They actually got structure that sticks up through the roof. Uh, so we're hoping that most of this can be done without uh, too much interference with your church. Uh, there's probably going to be a few weekends. Uh, I, I don't know how many that's going to be, but that's a good question. Uh, I would. Th this is going to be at least a 12-month, maybe a little bit longer process since we're adding on to an existing facility. Uh, but the hope is that we're not uh, knocking out all those ministries. You definitely shouldn't knock out your basement ministry at all. It's just adding on to... Um, 
some of the preschool stuff, but even that, uh, over the weekends, they'll probably have all their, their gear wiped up. That's how we did this last one, is make sure everything's cleaned up, and they had uh, construction barriers and everything else, so y'all were walking through the common space while construction was going on. So it shouldn't interfere with your, uh, your weekly activities here at the church. In your conservative estimate, <laughs> and I know this is in the future, the cost. Of the whole project? Yes. Would you like me to share that, Please. my estimate? Uh, right now, we're looking, uh, in Lubbock, we, we built Jane Ann Miller to give you an idea of, of cost per square foot. That was about $180 a square foot for Jane Ann Miller. That is a new ground up construction. Uh, it is a big, big facility. And so we were, got some uh, economy of scale and we got that down into 180 bucks a square foot. We're being conservative, so we're throwing $200 a square foot at this because we're adding onto a building and we're having the contractors gonna have to work around a building. So uh, we got 11,000 square feet up on the top floor, doing new elevators, new restrooms, uh, kitchen renovations. We're showing about $4.2, $4.3 million for this entire project. And again, that's a conservative estimate, and that is a all-in uh, number. That includes your fees, your architectural fees. Uh, that's not just construction dollars. Construction dollars, we had it uh, less than that. Construction is about $3.5 but I want you guys to be aware that there's more than just construction uh, costs that go on with the project. So we're showing about 3 point, or 4 .3 to 4 point, uh, 4 .2 to 4.3 million right now. I didn't hear an amen on that one. No applause. Or Unfortunately, applause. all the air wasn't sucked out of the room. <laughs> now, full disclosure, we have in the bank right now in our building fund to $482,000 to get started. So that's, that's a long ways from 4.2 or 4.3, but that's a good start. That's a really good start. That, that probably shut up the questions for the rest of the night, didn't it? <laughs> yes, ma'am. So, so here's the main uh, children's worship area right now and the, the stairs and the check-in for the children's. So these are those adult classrooms, right? Isn't that right, Jim, that we're talking about moving these functions up to that second story? There's really about two classrooms back there. Just two, two back here. So we would move these two uh, large classrooms up, or the three up there, three over here. So move these three large classrooms up to that second story, which frees up a lot more space for the children's. And again, this entire courtyard area is about uh, 1,300, 1,500 square feet uh, that we're grabbing for multifunctional spaces. Should we decide to do nothing tonight, we do still have to replace the roof over the children's area. Is that correct? And can you can you address the that the cost is a bad roof? <laughs> yeah, what are, what are we running a, a square foot on roofs nowadays? A lot. Um, yeah, it's in bad shape, and that's one of the things uh, we've talked about. Uh, is we want again being good stewards. If we need to replace it right now, let's do it. But if this is something we want to move forward with, we don't want to sit there and go drop sixty thousand dollars on a roof that we're fixing to tear off and build on top of. Um, we can go through and give you some estimates. I don't know them off the top of my head. I apologize, but that is a good uh, point. Uh, we had done a facility assessment five or six years ago, uh, and on that was some of the mechanical systems, but y'all have replaced a lot of those mechanical of, systems yeah. up there, but the roof is in bad shape. There are some low spots. Uh, I think y'all have uh, filled up a lot of leaks. Y'all have done a lot of repair up there, but it is, it is in bad shape. Every time it rains, the next morning we walk through the building and find the spots on the tile where there's been a leak and then get buckets of tar out there and try and find them and mop it down. The life expect We've outlived the life expectancy on that, that flat roof. Uh, full disclosure, the FLC needs to be replaced. And part of the thing that we've held off on doing anything was if we're going to build what you said, why spend 80 grand on a roof we're going to tear off? We, we're not going to be adding on the FLC, but Craig talked about the economy of scale that Miller Elementary able to drive the cost down a little bit. So we need to replace the roof on the FLC. Putting that into the contract can make it more economically feasible, a little more expense, but there are some things that can be done. But yeah, if, if we don't do anything, then we're gonna have to put on a roof. It's, uh, we're, just, we're just, well, we've, we've gotta do one thing or another. 
good questions. Thank you, Gail. Any other thoughts, comments? Uh, we're ready to go. Uh, I'll, I'll run you through a process. I'm sorry, I should have brought a slide for this. Um, we've done conceptual design to date. So once y'all are ready to move forward, uh, and Jim or Jason gives us a call, uh, if y'all want to continue to use us, we'd love to continue to do work with you guys. Uh, we would go through about four steps before we actually get to uh, construction. Uh, so one of them is schematic design. Uh, there's schematic design, design development, and construction documents. We've done conceptual design. These are a bunch of different terms. I know y'all aren't going to remember when you walk out of here. Uh, but schematic design is just taking this to the next level, and we're going to start massaging this a lot more. And so every one of these steps, we're working down a little bit more. So from schematic design, design development, and construction documents, that's where we actually put it all together into a set of documents like this right here, where we can hand it over to a contractor and say, give us an actual price for it, and they can build it from this. Uh, on our part, it's going to be about five months to do that portion. Uh, and then we go through a, a bidding phase, which would be about a month. Uh, we give the contractors 30 days to look over the plans, ask their questions. Uh, and then you've got about a month where we're doing contracts between the church and the contractor. So there's about seven months before construction actually starts. And then this is probably going to be a 12 to 14 month long process. Uh, so it is a long, I mean, when you're doing building processes, it's a long time. And we did something very similar when we did uh, the addition out here. Let me jump in here and say, before we started this whole project with the commons and before we presented phases to you, the last thing I wanted was to tell you we can add the second floor just because there's I-beam sticking up and then get your hopes built up and then we come in and find out, oops, we can't do that. So we had the engineers from Park Hill, Smith and Kupfer, um, Alan Wolf came through and did a, a survey as an assessment of the building and it is, it is structurally feasible to put a second floor on. We are going to have to do some cross bracing. We know that. There's going to be a few things that will take place. And Craig talked about surprises. Oh, heaven help us if we find surprises like we found on this project. Um, God's been protecting Bacon Heights. That's all i got to say. Uh, on some of the structure that we found that was not built at all according to, to plans. But we've already looked at some of that. So that should take some of the shock factor out. We'll also tell you what, what I would like to do is have, do the construction manager at risk, which is what we did on the Commons project, where we actually hire the contractor early in the process, and then the contractor works with the architect some to making sure what they are designing can be, can be built feasibly. The construction manager at risk will give us a, a, a dollar amount. He, he comes on for a certain percentage, works for us. If we do a bid, then they work for us also. But they're specifically responsible for working for us, and the subs then become like the contractor. And I cannot tell you what a great, great relationship we had with the Lee Lewis organization in the last building project. Randy Moss was the building superintendent because he was on site. I was out there every day, and Randy and I visited continually. And we were able to work with Craig, and uh, it was just a great working relationship, and we found some things in advance that needed to be dealt with. We could deal with them. We unearthed some surprises that slowed us down a little bit. But my, my dream would be we do another construction manager at risk. I think it greatly reduces the liability that we have as a church, and I think it gets a much better product in the end. So that's, we would try and bring them on, <clears throat> excuse me, we'd try and bring a contractor on early in the process to work with, work with Park Hill, Smith & Cooper. Are there any other questions or comments before I add just a couple of things? Craig, anything else you have for us tonight? I'm good. Anything you have for Craig that you would like to ask at this moment? Great thank presentation. You. Yes, let's say thank you to Craig, <laughs> Park Hill, Smith, and Cooper. Aaron, thank you, brother. Jason. Appreciate you. Jason. Oh, okay, we got one more. I'm oh. sorry, Craig. Yeah. Well, it, was, it was just a quick question about the kitchen. Will we be repurposing the appliances that are in there now, or will they be new? Uh, that's one thing that we talked a little bit about. I think, Jim, you're saying that you've got some connections. I may be speaking out of turn. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, yes, I am speaking out of turn. Uh, we can do either or. Uh, most of the time, whenever we're doing churches or uh, schools, we bring on a kitchen consultant because uh, that's a very specific uh, area. 
some of your equipment is still is still great quality stuff, and even though it's 20 or 30 years old, the Wolf, uh, and I forgot what equipment names y'all had. Was it Wolf? It wasn't Wolf. Yeah, I don't Y'all have got, already got some good commercial-grade equipment. Some of that was donated uh, by Chick-fil-A before. Uh, so that would be something that our team, uh, we would want to get our consultant on board, come out here and look at items. Uh, but I think everything is in working order. If we need to get new, uh, we can definitely look at doing that and getting new. I can tell you, we want to repurpose everything we possibly can, yeah. Tim, because I'm tight. <laughs> yeah, I'm tight. That got an amen. Did you hear that? Hey. <laughs> I like that. The penny pincher. Yeah. Anyone else? <laughs> oh, we got one back there, Jim. I didn't. Well, I'm speaking good. about Hang the on. kitchen, the one downstairs on the lower level, is that something that could be repurposed? How much is it actually used um, as a kitchen that it could be expanded to use as a classroom? That's a good, I'll let you answer that one, Jim. That's, I don't know the functions of that class or that kitchen that much. We're not looking in, in this project to do anything beyond what's being presented tonight. After we get that all done, then we'll come back and look at what we can do with the lower level, with the basement for the children's ministry. I'm in agreement with you that kitchen can go and we can get additional classroom. The one thing we can't move down, there's going to be bathrooms because of where they're located. So that creates a little bit awkward to work around for the children's ministry in doing that, but that's something that can be done. But I think the kitchen downstairs will probably go once this is all finished because it's not being used that much. We've got kind of a secondary kitchen here in the, in the Berkstrom Hall for receptions and things. We will have a really, really good commercial kitchen. So it kind of comes down, how many kitchens does the church need? So, mm. so I think we can repurpose that space. Dean, did you have a question? Dean's asking, how are we going to pay for this? <laughs> You're going to write a check. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dean. I got some amens, too. I like it. <laughs> uh, That's one of the reasons why Lubbock National Bank is here tonight, because they're wanting to hear kind of what we're talking about. What, my, what I envision, Jason, do you, would you rather address this one? No, you go ahead. We talked about okay. it. What I envision is we'll do like we've done the last couple of building projects, is that we will ask people to make pledges above the tithe to go forward. We'll have to get a loan, and I'm hoping it'll be with Lubbock National Bank because I really don't want to have to move our accounts elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but hoping we get a really good loan rate from Lubbock National Bank, which is what we did on this last project. <clears throat> we had quite a bit of cash on hand. We got a, con we got a construction loan of about $1.4 million line of credit. When we got everything built, then we rolled it all over into a into a, I think it was a 15-year loan with a five-year rate. We paid it off really, really early. On, a, on this size, I think we'll be looking at least a 15-year loan and get, trying to get really aggressive and pay it off, but it will be us paying for it through, through contributions. That's kind of how we do it in a Baptist church. Well, Donna wants you to know that when you make a contribution to the building fund, when we were in the construction here, if that check was dropped on the offering plate on, on Sunday, it went to the bank on about Tuesday. Quickly, we get it there, so we held Amen. down our interest rates. <laughs> so we tried to turn it as quickly as possible. Any others? I don't want to cut you off. I want to make sure you ample opportunity. Everybody likes that lower floor. Lower floor. Yeah. Uh, that's it right there. Here are the restrooms, and I, the kitchen's right off the, the worship is there? Right back there? Right there, right there. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's it. What happens now? Well, Jason's going to pray for us. <laughs> A lot. A lot. <laughs> yeah. I want to say just a second. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Could the bathrooms be expanded a little if we do away with the kitchen? We could. That anything, was anything's possible. Yeah. yeah. 
I, I was told that y'all had gone through the process of, of bringing those up to handicap accessibility last year or the year before, is that right? About two years ago, we did an okay. in-house project and we made those things much more accessible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've we've got them where they're much more accessible. David, oh, you want a mic? You're loud. All right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Going back to the basement, if we're moving all the adults out of the basement, and I know this is long range, but. I hope a lot of us downstairs that have the kids, if the kids are gonna take over the basement, I hope we have some say with keeping partial kitchen because we would use that kitchen more, but it's got multi international people down there. So it's hard to have just for the children's area because gotcha. there's a lot of adults down there. So it would be nice to have that kitchen and have us an area for the children if the basement is the children's area. So we wouldn't need to take out a kitchen and add bathrooms and stuff if we had a whole area for ourselves if we're moving people upstairs. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that amen there. Great. Thank you. That was mine. Appreciate it. <laughs> you ask the folks this plot if they like it. All right. So on a, on a round of applause, <laughs> Jim's going to talk. No, don't put applause for him. <laughs> No, I just want to just real brief what your idea of a time frame is. I mean, we have tonight, and I know you're probably going to go through this. So, Absolutely. So on a round of applause real quick, what do you think of the concept of what we could do? It's exciting. It's exciting. The question that, uh, that Myers is asking, so what do we do next? Well, uh, tonight was important for us to be able to gauge where we're at as a church and where we're ready. Uh, we will discuss and pray as a staff and uh, Jim and myself and others being together, our finance team. Um, but I'll tell you, just this, this is Jason speaking, okay, so I'm a little off the cuff. Personal preference would be by the end of February, 1st of March, we bring this to a vote as a church and whether we're going to do it or not. And, uh, and your preacher said this morning, let's climb God's mountain. Man, this is part of it. If we are going to reach the summit... Uh, we have got to have the space for the people that are coming. I'm telling you, they're coming to our very front door. On Wednesday night, I come around the corner to go back into my office to get a jump drive for some slides to use for our teaching time in the FLC. When I reach the very front door, there's a young man standing there, quite taller than me, but who isn't? He's standing there <laughs> trying to get in the door. We hadn't quite unlocked all of our doors yet. I let him in. And I said, hey, can I help you? Introduce myself to him. He began to tell me his story. Friends, he lives over on 44th in Chicago. He works for Sinclair. He's been here six months, and four to five different times he's come into this facility to service our HVAC system. He said, I've tried every church in Lubbock except Bacon Heights. He said, what do you have for adults on Wednesday night? I said, man, you're at the right place. We got to talking. He came the next morning at 6 o'clock on Thursday morning to our men's ministry Bible study. Friends, he's looking to connect. We didn't go and find him. He came to our very front door. And when we think about the summit, you take on that mentality and you climb together. This is a doable project. Um, Four million dollars is a lot of money. But my God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And so those kind of things don't scare me. Uh, we can do this. We can do this. Um, it's an amazing opportunity for us uh, to expand the ministries and our influence in this community in the 414 zip code. But to say this, we are at a, at a pivotal point in the history of our church. And the reason why I would like for us to, to bring this to a vote as quickly as possible is so that we can begin that process so that come November of 2017, and Craig knows this, we've had this conversation, I believe, standing on the roof uh, several weeks ago. November of 2017... We would love to celebrate our 50th anniversary as a church with this facility being done. And it's doable, but we've got to start now to make that happen. And even better is Joyce Rowe is going to chair our 50th anniversary team. And I'll tell you, when Joyce and I were talking about this and we met in my office and began to share concepts, when Joyce Rowe says, we can do this, Friends, we can do this, all right? 
So I want to ask Jim, who's been uh, very instrumental and will continue to be in this uh, project and in this process, uh, to close us in a word of prayer. But Jim, thank you for your work. Craig, Aaron, thank you for your time tonight and presenting this to us. And I tell you, I'll say it again. Let's go climb God's mountain. All right, Jim. Heavenly Father, thank you for the time we've had together tonight. Thank you for the spirit in this room. Father, I still celebrate what happened this morning and now what's, what's happening this evening. Father, I, we don't want to take lightly what we're looking at tonight. It's a major investment. We understand that. But we know that you're a great God. We know you're a great God. And Father, you're able to do exceeding abundantly beyond what we think we can do. And as our pastor presented a couple weeks ago, uh, faith means taking risks. So Father, I pray that, that your spirit of wisdom will fall upon this congregation. And when we do bring this for a vote, that there might be a, a united vote behind this. Either, yeah, this is what we need to do, or no, we don't think this is what God wants us to do. Father, make it very abundantly clear. Make it abundantly clear what we need to do. Give us your guidance. Give us your direction every step of the way. Father, thank you for the people that, that you're sending to Bacon Heights. Uh, Father, we, we standing out in the commons on Sunday morning and the commons on Wednesday night and seeing some of the folks who are walking in the door for the first time, it's just it's humbling to see what you're doing. So thank you for what you're doing. Father, guide us as we go through this. Thank you for the creativity that you've given to, that you've imparted into Craig and to Aaron. Father, we thank you and celebrate that beautiful commons we have out here. And thank you that, that the architectural peers have looked at that and said, wow, that's a quality, quality piece of work. May we never take for granted what you've provided to us, Father. May we never take that for granted. Father, as we go to our homes tonight, dismiss us with your blessings. Give us a good night's rest. And then tomorrow as we awaken to face the work week, may we go in the power of your spirit. And as we find people you place in our path, may we live out the summit and model for them the love of Christ and multiply the name of Christ within them. It's my prayer tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed.